Greetings. Today we embark upon a reflection of Cleopatra the Sept, whose existence and reign entwined with Rome, a narrative rife with power, betrayal, and the undying quest for dominance. Her story, a mirror to our ambitions, virtues, and vices, beckons a thorough inquiry. Cleopatra, ah, a name that echoes through the annals of history, not just for her charm, but for her intellect. Her alliance with Rome, cunningly crafted, reshaped the Mediterranean politica. Yet here we are, poised to dissect her legend beyond the facades. Facades indeed. The aftermath of her defeat heralded Rome's ascension, transforming the Republic's remnants into an empire under my reign. Her fall from grace was Rome's rise to glory, an irony she most likely never envisioned amidst her seductions and stratagems. Ah, seduction and strategy, tools as potent as any legion. Cleopatra wielded them with an audacity that dances on the precipice of madness and genius. I find such a precipice familiar, a reflection of my own reign's capriciousness, perhaps. As we traverse through Cleopatra's odyssey, it's imperative to scrutinize not merely the personal, but the paradigm shifts her era heralded. Transition, whether from republic to empire or polytheism towards a singular divinity under my rule, shares the essence of upheaval and ambition. Personal and political alliances, a theme as timeless as Rome itself. Cleopatra and Caesar, Antony and her, me and my exploits. Each a testament to the power wielded not just through swords, but through hearts and perception. A spectacle, grander than any theater, could encapsulate. As we unravel Cleopatra's narrative, let us be mindful of the multifaceted prism through which we examine her life. Each perspective reveals a distinct hue, a separate truth. Wisdom, justice, the quest for understanding, let these be our guiding lights as we delve into her story. A story that, while ancient, holds lessons as potent today as in the era of the Nile's last pharaoh. Each of you brings a wealth of experience, insight, and indeed personal bias to this discussion. Let us proceed, not as emperors and philosophers confined by the chronology of our reigns, but as timeless scholars in pursuit of truth. Let us delve into the Ptolemaic dynasty's intricacies and its paramount influence on Rome. Julius, your experience with Egypt was first-hand. Share with us the strategic significance of your alliances. Ah, Egypt, a land of wealth and mystery that enchanted even Rome's finest. My alliance with Cleopatra was multifaceted, a blend of political acumen and undeniable fascination. The Ptolemaic dynasty, through Cleopatra, became an indispensable ally to Rome offering grain and wealth crucial for our Republic's ambitions. It was a relationship built on mutual benefit, yet it was also a chess game of power and influence. I must interject. While Julius sees romance and strategy, I see the ultimate conquest and acquisition. My defeat of Antony and Cleopatra was not just a personal victory. It was the annexation of Egypt's inexhaustible resources into Rome's dominion. The wealth of Egypt under my rule secured the empire's prosperity and my own legacy. Such pragmatism, Augustus. Yet, what of the spectacle? The grandeur of Egypt seduced Rome long before your triumph. The Ptolemaic dynasty's influence was not merely economic, it was also cultural, a melding of two worlds that fascinated the plebs and patricians alike. My own exploits pale in comparison to the drama of Cleopatra and her Rome. And from these dramas, we observe the evolution of empire. The political machinations of the Ptolemaic dynasty underscore a broader narrative of imperial ambition. My own reign would later mirror this as I sought to unify and expand Rome under a new creed. The Ptolemaic influence on Rome was, in essence, a precursor to the later transformations of the empire. A transformation indeed, but one cannot overlook the art of their influence. Cleopatra knew well the power of image and perception much like I understand the devastating allure of performance. The Ptolemaic dynasty's legacy is not solely found in the cold calculus of resources and territories, but in the lasting drama of its leaders' lives, a performance that captivated and shook the very foundations of Rome. The Ptolemaic dynasty's relationship with Rome is indeed fraught with complexity, interwoven with strategic alliances, economic prosperity, and cultural entanglements. Each of you brings a perspective that, while rooted in your respective times, underscores the timeless interplay between two powers destined to shape the course of history. Let us carry forward this understanding as we navigate through the life and times of Cleopatra VII.
Let us turn our focus to the cunning ascent of Cleopatra. Her strategic maneuvers helped reclaim her throne amidst the serpentine politics of her time. Thoughts? Audacity. Cleopatra's audacity rivals that of any man who ever sat upon the throne of Rome. To seduce Caesar to entangle Antony, only a mind as devious as mine could appreciate such schemes. Strategy, it was sheer boldness veiled as diplomacy. Let us not oversimplify Caligula. Her actions were not mere caprice. Cleopatra's ascent was a calculated ballet of power and intelligence. Aligning with me granted her the military backing she desperately needed. It was a confluence of mutual interests, a point I suggest you overlook in your critique of audacity. Your era, Julius, was the cradle of these political amalgamations. But let us consider the broader tapestry. Cleopatra's strategies signaled a shift in the ancient power structures, demonstrating that leadership could transcend the boundaries of Rome. Her alliances were a precursor to the transformations I would later oversee in my reign. Constantine crafts a picture most generous. Yet let us not forget the realm of outcomes. Cleopatra's gambits, while daring, led ultimately to her downfall and the decisive victory at Actium. Her rise, marked by shrewdness, was also a tale of hubris, a cautionary echo through history. Three downfall, mere perspectives on the infinite wheel of fortune. Her afterimage, though, is what fascinates the eternal Cleopatra, forever entwined with the fates of Rome. Perhaps in her failures, she achieved an undying legacy, something even my reign's extravagance could not secure. A legacy wrought from desperation, perhaps. Her story begs reflection on the nature of power of individual versus the invincible tide of empire. We've all danced with fortune, have we not? Yet Cleopatra's dance was among the most spectacular, even if it led her to a tragic finale. Indeed, her strategies, while fueled by necessity, reflected a depth of vision that transcended her immediate crises. Through her alliances, she sought to preserve her kingdom, a testament to her commitment to Egypt's autonomy against overwhelming imperial forces. Yet, we must ponder, had her strategies been less personal and more pragmatic, could the eventual annexation of Egypt into the empire have been averted? Or was it inevitable, a mere postponement of destiny? Destiny, Constantine, or the inexorable march of Rome's ambition? I pose that Cleopatra's story is but a chapter in a larger narrative of Rome's expansion, wherein all roads led not to freedom for the vanquished, but to subjugation and integration. Precisely, Julius. Her end was my beginning, her defeat at Actium, the dawn of Pax Romana. Through these lenses, her strategies, however brilliant, were but the final flutterings of a candle before the dawn of a new empire under my rule. So we find in Cleopatra's ascent and strategies a confluence of audacity, strategy, and tragedy. A saga that intersects with each of our reigns in profound and distinct ways. Her legacy, complex and multifaceted, serves as a mirror reflecting Rome's ambitions, its capacities for greatness, and its moments of overreach. Let us delve into the dual nature of Cleopatra's liaisons with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. Were these mere alliances of convenience, or something deeper? Julius, your insights will be invaluable. My association with Cleopatra was both a political gambit and a personal connection. She was not just a queen, she was a force of nature. Our alliance, Politica et Personalis, strengthened our respective positions. Yet, it transcended mere convenience. There was a meeting of minds, a kinship of spirits. I must interject. Our histories are painted with the liaisons of the powerful, often romanticized, but it's the spectacle that captivates the populace. My reign, too, was filled with such spectacles. Cleopatra and Caesar, Antony and Cleopatra. These were political theatrics as much as they were private passions. Ah, Nero, you see everything as theater. But remember, unlike your spectacles, the alliances forged by Cleopatra were not just for show. They nearly altered the course of our history. I find her ambition and daring fascinating. Political marriages and alliances are tools but she wielded them with unmatched finesse. It seems then, according to Julius, that there was genuine affection amidst the political alignment. Indeed, Marcus. Our bond was not fabricated. It was a strategic partnership, yes, but one that allowed for a deep and genuine connection. Such complexities are often overlooked in historical narratives. Let us not be swayed by sentimentalism. Julius, your affair may have had its moments, but the ultimate design was power. 
The union with Cleopatra was a calculated move. Antony's downfall was precipitated by his entanglement with her, a distraction that led to his defeat at Actium. These were not mere romances. They were political maneuvers with significant consequences. The discussion highlights the pivotal role Cleopatra played in the transition from republic to empire. Through these alliances, she sought to preserve her kingdom's sovereignty amidst Rome's expanding ambition. This is a testament to her sagacity. She navigated the treacherous political waters of Rome, engaging with its most powerful figures, leveraging both intellect and personal charm. Constantine, you grasp the broader context. Cleopatra's engagements were indeed sagacious attempts at ensuring Egypt's survival against the burgeoning power of Rome. Our entanglements, though personal, were always in the shadow of empire. Ultimately, these alliances, whether forged in the bedchamber or the battlefield, were about power. The heart and the crown are not so easily separated. It is clear, through this discourse, that the relationships of Cleopatra with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony were multifaceted, woven from strands of political necessity, personal affinities, and the unrelenting pursuit of power. Each served to shape our history in profound ways. Let us delve into the subject of female leadership, notably that of Cleopatra, in the dominantly viral era of ours. Her governance among us, stern rulers, brings forth an interesting discourse on merit versus gender in sovereignty. Ah, Cleopatra, her audacity knew no bounds, matching even my flair for the unorthodox. Rome, in its grandeur, often scoffed at the notion of women wielding power. Yet, here was a queen who dared to challenge men at their own game. Why? Her reign makes me ponder. Perhaps Rome missed the spectacle of a true empress on the throne. Cleopatra's intellect and charm were formidable weapons in a world where men often underestimated the cunning of women. To navigate through the treacherous waters of politics, she used every resource at her disposal. Her alliance with me formed out of strategic necessity, yet was enriched by mutual respect, a testament to her leadership prowess. Indeed, Julius. The question of virtues in leadership being tied to one's gender is a debate ripe for our age. Cleopatra's rule exemplifies that wisdom and aptitude for governance transcend the bounds of masculinity and femininity. Though the union of Egypt under Cleopatra's sway was momentarily an affront to Roman dominion, it cannot be overlooked that her governance was marked by acumen rather tantamount to that of Rome's finest. Yet let us not be swayed by romantic notions. Her rule was not without its flaws, and her ultimate defeat posed a critical lesson on the limitations of personal ambition over statehood. Leadership, regardless of gender, demands a vision that transcends the present, fostering a legacy that endures through ages. Cleopatra's ambition to restore the glory of her dynasty aligns with my own efforts to unify and transform Rome under a new religious zeal. Gender did not confine her vision, nor did it mine. Yet we cannot ignore the power of perception and legend. Cleopatra's image is as much a creation of her political acumen as of the tales spun by those who survived her. In art and politics alike, the specter of a female ruler cast a long shadow, one colored by intrigue and seduction. Does not the very nature of power alter when wielded by a woman? Ba appearance and reality often intermix on the grand stage of empire. Cleopatra wielded her femininity as a weapon, one that could coalesce nations or bring the mighty to their knees. A feat, I dare say, not many men could achieve with such finesse. Our discussion uncovers the multifaceted layers of Cleopatra's rulership, juxtaposed against the backdrop of our Roman patriarchal dominion. Her ability to assert authority while navigating the constraints placed upon her by virtue of gender underscores the universal challenges of leadership that transcend time and societal structures. Let this serve as a reflection on the virtues of merit in governance over the constraints of tradition and expectation. The Battle of Actium was more than just a naval engagement. It was the decisive moment where the fate of Rome and Egypt intertwined. Antony and Cleopatra's errors were not merely strategic, but conceptual. They failed to understand the Republic's evolution into an empire underestimating the determination of Octavian, myself. Determination? Or was it your cold, calculated ambition that led to their downfall? 
Antony and Cleopatra gambled and lost, but wasn't Rome itself built on such gambles? Their only mistake was losing to you. Indeed, the psyche of defeat fascinates me. Was it despair that clouded their judgment, leading to their ultimate demise? The specter of despair haunts the powerful, making spectacles of their failures as much as their triumphs. Despair, perhaps, or a lack of virtus. True courage might have changed their fate. Yet we must ponder, was the outcome of Actium inevitable, given the trajectory Rome was on? Inevitable or not, Actium reshaped the empire, much as my victory at the Milvian Bridge did. It's the pivot on which history turns. Antony and Cleopatra could not have envisioned the world that would come after. Yet let us not forget, Actium was not just a failure of Antony and Cleopatra. It was also my failure. My own relationship with Cleopatra, while politically advantageous, laid the groundwork for the events that led to Actium. We cannot view it in isolation. True, Julius. Actium did not happen in a vacuum. It was the culmination of decades of political maneuvering. Antony and Cleopatra's miscalculation was believing they could outmaneuver the Senate and Rome's military might. Miscalculation? It was hubris, the same hubris that leads emperors to believe they are gods. Antony and Cleopatra saw themselves as the divine rulers of a new era. Rome, however, had little room for such divinity outside its pantheon. And what of Rome's reaction? Was Actium celebrated as a victory of strategy or as the suppression of the other, the Eastern influence embodied by Cleopatra? It was seen perhaps as both, Nero. Rome has always been adept at incorporating the foreign into its identity, a process of transformation rather than simple conquest. Actium was a turning point, signaling not just the defeat of external enemies, but the internal consolidation of power into a singular vision of empire. Exactly, Marcus. The transformation of Rome post-Actium, my own conversion, the adoption of Christianity, these were all facilitated by the centralization of power. Actium, in a way, sowed the seeds for Rome's eventual spiritual unification. Let us not romanticize Actium excessively. It was a battle for power, plain and simple. The complexities of its aftermath, however, demonstrate the intricate dance between power, politics, and perception. A dance that ended with Egypt becoming the granary of Rome, securing my legacy and Rome's future prosperity. Antony and Cleopatra, whatever their faults, played their role in the divine comedy of history. Let us now turn our gaze eastward to the profound interchange between Rome and the Orient under Cleopatra's reign. Constantine, Gracchus est nonne. How do you perceive this blending of cultures influenced the empire, particularly in matters of religious syncretism? Veritas in your words, Marcus. The integration of Eastern gods into our pantheon under Cleopatra's aegis was profound. My own initiatives to Christianize the empire did not exist in a vacuum. The syncretism of her era, the amalgamation of Isis worship with Roman deities, laid fertile ground for religious fusion. It's a testament to the power of religious and cultural exchange, a precursor to the Constantinian shift. Constantine lauds this syncretism, but let's not gloss over the strategic mastery Cleopatra wielded through such cultural interplay. Our Egyptian alliance wasn't merely about religion or culture. It was about power. She used her understanding of both Egyptian and Roman ways to carve out a critical space for Egypt amidst Roman hegemony. Julius, while your point stands, the consequences of these cultural exchanges were not always benign. The introduction of Eastern customs and deities indeed fascinated many in Rome, but it also bred suspicion and fear. As Rome's first emperor, post-Actium, I faced the task of reaffirming traditional Roman values and piety somewhat overshadowed by the Eastern luxuries and decadence that Cleopatra symbolized. Ah, but the opulence and the merging of cultures. It was intoxicating. I reveled in it, expanding on the legacy that Cleopatra left, bringing extravagance and a touch of divine madness to Rome. The gods of Egypt, the splendor of her court, it all intrigued me, inspired my own divine aspirations. Caligula speaks to the allure of decadence, yet we overlook the power of narrative in all this. Cleopatra's Egypt intrigued us because it was both familiar and otherworldly, a narrative she skillfully spun to her advantage. My own reign echoes this, leveraging the performative to captivate and control. 
Cleopatra understood, as I did, that spectacle and myth could be as powerful as legions. The reflections you each offer underscore the complexity of Cleopatra's legacy. Her reign was not merely the end of an era, but a bridge to a new world, where culture, religion, and politics intermingled freely. This dialogue between East and West initiated in her time would shape the empire for centuries, stitching a diverse tapestry of beliefs and practices into the Roman ethos. Let us turn our attention to the economic reforms of Cleopatra and their ripple effects on the Roman Empire. Augustus, would you illuminate us first? Cleopatra's grasp on economic machinations was indeed admirable. She centralized the storage and distribution of grain, a move that stabilized Egypt and indirectly fed into the prosperity of Rome. My control over Egypt, post her demise, allowed me to solidify the grain dole, ensuring the plebs of Rome were fed and docile. Her policies, in essence, paved the way for the peace and stability during my reign. Ah, wealth, the true power behind any throne. Cleopatra knew, as do I, that extravagance commands respect. Her financial strategies were no mere maneuvers for stability but a grand display. She understood that to control the economy was to control the world. In this, she and I are kindred spirits, though I, of course, dare say I've outshone her. Extravagance, Caligula, often breeds contempt not respect. True power lies in the ability to wield wealth, not squander it. Cleopatra's strategies ensured her nation's survival, while your expenditures threatened Rome's financial stability. Both perspectives highlight the dichotomy of power, the display and the management. Cleopatra's adeptness at both was indeed forward thinking. She bolstered Egypt's economy, a move that, while it did not save her reign, certainly influenced the policies of my own. Integrating diverse economies and stabilizing the empire's finances were tasks made simpler by examining her legacy. Let us not overlook the strategic implications of her economic reforms. By aligning Egypt's economy closely with Rome, Cleopatra secured a political alliance that, unfortunately, turned out to be a double-edged sword. As much as it brought her short-term gains, it made Egypt all the more a jewel for Rome to possess. Ah, but what is power without spectacle? Cleopatra's financial acumen funded her lavish lifestyle, which in turn fed her fame. Her economic reforms and their impact on Rome aside, it was her personal extravagance that captivated the Roman imagination. Her legacy, intertwined with Rome's, is as much about her wealth as it is about her political maneuvers. Your insights underscore not only the complexity of Cleopatra's economic policies, but also their enduring impact on Rome and beyond. It appears that her legacy, viewed through different lenses, offers a multifaceted understanding of power, wealth, and their conduits in shaping history. We embark now upon a discussion of Cleopatra's legacy, a narrative interwoven with both Roman propaganda and the obscured reality of her reign. Let us dissect these tales with a discerning eye. Ah, propaganda, the sweet melody of the empire. As an artist and emperor, I've seen how tales can be sculpted more delicately than marble. Cleopatra, demonized by our own historians, serves as a perfect example. Her story was crafted to villainize, much like my own, posthumously. Indeed, Nero, but let's not embroider our own pity onto Cleopatra's tapestry. She was a queen, a strategist who played the board as well as any. Roman historians? Pa! They painted her as a seductress, a foreign threat because it served their narrative, not unlike how they later smeared my reign with tales of madness. Enough of this self-indulgence. The fact remains, Cleopatra was a thorn in Rome's side, a rival to be defeated. The narrative crafted against her was essential to solidify our rule, to justify the annexation of Egypt. Call it propaganda, but it was a weapon as potent as any legion. Yet, must we not question the ethics of such narratives? The manipulation of history shapes not just perceptions of the past, but the very essence of truth for future generations. Marcus raises a valid point. The construction of historical truth is a powerful tool, one that can unify an empire or tear it asunder. My own embrace of Christianity was both a genuine conviction and a strategic move to consolidate power. History thus remembers me both as a visionary and a utilitarian. Let us not forget, gentlemen, that history is penned by the victors. My exploits magnified to the heavens serve to elevate me to a godlike status. 
Cleopatra, in her intelligence, recognized the power of such narratives. Together, we sought to create a new vision for Rome and Egypt alike. Visionaries or not, your so-called new vision crumbled, Julius. Cleopatra's end, dramatic though it may be, was perhaps the only truth not masked by the layers of Roman propaganda. In death, she remained a queen, defiant to the last. A poignant observation, Caligula. Despite Rome's attempt to tarnish her legacy, Cleopatra endures in the annals of history, a testament to her indomitable spirit. We too are subjects of history's cruel brush, often painted in strokes far from reality. Thus, our discussion on Cleopatra's legacy reveals a complex interplay between perception and reality. A reminder that history is often a mirror reflecting the biases and ambitions of those who write it. Let us then be prudent guardians of the past, for it is in understanding these multifaceted narratives that we uncover the true essence of our shared history. Let us now turn our gaze towards the denouement of the Ptolemaic kingdom and its absorption into the vast expanse of Rome. Augustus, your victory marked not merely the end of an era, but set a new course for Roman Egyptian history. Articulate the import of this transition. The swift incorporation of Egypt under Roman dominion was a masterstroke of imperial strategy. The annexation ensured that Rome's granaries were perennially filled, fortifying my rule and the empire's stability. Egypt, under Cleopatra, was a jewel. Under Rome, it became the cornerstone of our prosperity. This was not mere conquest, but a strategic integration, ensuring Pax Romana spread even to the sands of the Nile. Integration, yes, but let us not mask ambition with words of harmony. Egypt succumbed to the might of Rome, yet it infused our empire with its ancient wisdom and culture. In building my Constantinople, I heeded the lessons of Alexandria, understanding that the confluence of East and West nurtures a civilization's strength. Cleopatra's Egypt was the last beacon of Hellenistic culture, which in its absorption enriched Roman identity. Ah, the spoils of Egypt. Luxuries flowed into Rome like the Nile's flood. But let us not be coy about the nature of this integration. It was subjugation, a testament to Rome's insatiable gluttony for power and riches. Cleopatra sought to seduce her way to power, but faced reality's brutal embrace. A ruler must wield power mercilessly. Rome showed her that harsh lesson. Subjugation or not, Caligula, the outcome was Rome's ascendance. The wealth of Egypt secured our dominion and fed our legions. Cleopatra sought to play gods with Rome, but in the end, it was Rome that cast the final die. Such is the dual-edged sword of history. Conquest intertwines with cultural exchange. The Ptolemaic Kingdom's end heralded a new epoch for Rome, one enriched by the spoils of Egypt, but marked by the shadow of its conquest. Constantine, you spoke of Rome's identity being enriched by this integration. Can you expand on how Cleopatra's legacy influenced the empire beyond mere territorial gain? Indeed, Marcus. Cleopatra and the Hellenistic influence of Egypt seeded within the Roman consciousness an appreciation for the arts, sciences, and philosophy of the East. This was not merely assimilation, it was a renaissance that preluded my own era's transformation. The Christian religion, too, encountered a polytheistic society in Egypt, and from these encounters, Rome's religious landscape evolved towards a more encompassing creed. Constantine, while your words paint a grand tapestry of cultural synthesis, let us remember the strategic mastery behind Rome's expansion. Egypt was a treasure trove, its integration a crowning jewel in Rome's imperial diadem. Cleopatra's end was Rome's beginning. Yet, in our conquests and in our integration of lands such as Egypt, do we not also sow the seeds of our eventual decline? Each acquisition, each assimilation of cultures, while it strengthens, also dilutes the very essence of Rome. Cleopatra's Egypt may have enriched us, but it also exemplified the dangers of imperial overreach. A reflection most poignant, Nero. The narrative of Cleopatra and Egypt's assimilation into Rome serves as a parable of power, culture, and the complexities inherent in empire. In her story, we see the brilliance and brittleness of civilization itself. So we dance on the knife's edge between greatness and ruin. Let Cleopatra's fate remind us of the price of ambition and the impermanence of power. And thus, we close our discussion on the integration of Egypt into the Roman Empire, a chapter replete with lessons on power, culture, and the indelible marks they leave on the sands of history. 
The story of Cleopatra serves not merely as a historical account, but as a mirror reflecting the virtues and vices inherent in the pursuit of empire. Let us now deliberate on the enduring cultural and political influence of Cleopatra's reign on us, the stewards of Rome's august legacy. Constantine, your reign was marked by monumental shifts. How do you perceive Cleopatra's shadow in your era? In my efforts to unify Rome under the banner of Christianity, I discerned the echoes of Cleopatra's influence, not in religion per se, but in her skill at melding cultures, her strategic marriages, her embracing of Egyptian deities, these acts prefigured my own attempts to blend disparate beliefs into a single Roman identity. Like Cleopatra, I understood that strength lies not in purity, but in the alloy. It's fascinating, Constantine, yet I must interject. My time with Cleopatra, brief though it was, imparted a lesson in the power of personal influence over mere territorial conquest. Her intellect, charm, and political acumen were forces that reshaped our interactions with foreign leaders. I see her methods reflected in our diplomatic approaches, favoring alliances and understanding over brute subjugation. Julius, while your affection for her is clear, let us not overlook the ruthlessness behind the charm. Cleopatra's sway over you, and later Antony, nearly derailed Rome's destiny. It was her defeat that secured my rise and consequently Rome's golden age. Yet, her economic savvy, particularly her manipulation of Egypt's wealth, served as a valuable model. In defeating her, I learned to integrate, rather than annihilate, a kingdom's assets to Rome's benefit. Ah, but we mustn't ignore the sheer spectacle of her reign. The opulence of her court, her renowned entry into Rome, these set a precedent for the grandeur and extravagance I embraced. In Cleopatra, I recognized a kindred spirit, one who understood that awe and wonder are potent tools to wield power. Caligula speaks truth. Beyond economics and alliances, Cleopatra mastered the art of narrative, crafting a mystique that endures. My own reign, infamous for its theatrics, was inspired by such grandiosity. Her legacy taught us the importance of perception. She became immortal, etched into the collective memory of history, not merely by deeds, but by the stories told of her. Each of your insights underscores Cleopatra's indelible mark upon us and Rome. Her life was a testament to the multifaceted nature of power, encompassing economic strategy, cultural synthesis, personal charisma, and the crafting of legacy. It behooves us to reflect on these elements, recognizing their impact on our rule and Rome's enduring narrative. Indeed, Marcus, while we may dispute her methods and motivations, her influence is undeniable. In her, we see the complexities of leadership and the intricacies of empire, lessons that each of us has grappled with in steering the course of Rome's destiny. As we have each navigated our epochs, let us acknowledge the wisdom gleaned from Cleopatra's reign. Her legacy, though entwined with Rome's, stands as a beacon of both caution and inspiration. Inspiration, yes, but let us not grow too fond in our retrospection. The past, Cleopatra's included, is a guide, not a tether. We forge ahead, informed by history, but not ensnared by it. Well said, Caligula. The past is a canvas, and we, its artists. Cleopatra painted her portion vividly, leaving us to contemplate and perhaps to color our own dominions with equal boldness. A fitting reflection to conclude our discussion on Cleopatra's lasting impact. Her life, intertwined with Rome's destiny, remains a potent reminder of the power of individual agency in shaping the arc of history. Let us carry forward the lessons learned, ever mindful of our role in the continuum of Rome's saga. We've delved deep into the life and legacy of Cleopatra II, exploring her influence from multiple angles. Let us distill our insights, beginning with Augustus. What lessons does her life impart, especially from, from your vantage point? Cleopatra's narrative, though tarnished by propaganda, offers a testament to the power of alliance and the peril of hubris. Her alliance with Rome, initially her strength, became her downfall. Imperium signed fine, empire without end, she sought, yet it led to her demise. A cautionary tale for those who would reach beyond their grasp. Bah, caution. Cleopatra lived as I did, unconstrained by the petty bounds of caution. She reveled in opulence and played the great game of power. What fell her empire wasn't her ambition, but the failings of those lesser beings around her. From her, we learn the merit of embracing one's true nature, 
be it as ruler, visionary, or even a madman. Ah, but the artist in her calls to me. Like my own rule, hers was an opera, grand and tragic. Her story teaches the power of narrative, how it shapes legacies. We are all of us mere actors upon the stage, and she played her part with a flair that ensnared the heart of Rome itself. Legacy is the art we leave behind, shaped by the brushstrokes of our actions. And yet, through her tale runs the thread of pragmatism amidst the dream. Her reign, a bridge between old gods and new worlds, shows the power of adaptability and vision. She harnessed the venerable to navigate the tumultuous present, blending cultures, religions, ideas. A reminder, in my eyes, that the greatest leaders shape the future by guiding the present with wisdom gleaned from the past. Do not overlook the bedrock of personal ambition and the alliances of the heart. Cleopatra and I, our union was more than mere convenience. It was a confluence of two great streams of ambition. She sought to elevate her realm to new heights, as did I with Rome. Her life is a mirror to the complexities of power, ambition, and human connection. In her story, I see the eternal dance of human aspiration and the intricate ballet of politics. Each of you reflects a facet of Cleopatra's undying legacy, from the allure of power and the grandeur of ambition to the nuances of narrative and the blending of cultures. Her life, intertwined with Rome's ascendance, teaches enduring lessons on leadership, the manipulation of perception, and the crucible of empire building. Let us then carry forward these insights, applying them to our understanding of governance, legacy, and the human condition. Our discussion, though it concludes, leaves a wealth of wisdom to ponder in the everlasting quest to comprehend the past and its indelible mark on the fabric of humanity. Indeed, Marcus, but let us remember, history often remembers the spectacle more than the substance. Let us not underestimate the power of legacy as crafted by those who come after. A fitting coda, Nero. Our discussion illuminates not just Cleopatra's epoch, but also the continuum of leadership, empire, and the shaping of history. With that, our exploration concludes, yet the study of history marches ever onward. Each era offers its lessons, each leader a mirror reflecting the virtues and vices inherent in the quest for power and legacy. Let us depart with minds enlightened and spirits challenged.